operating at an extraordinary level can seem challenging. Learn how to survive in the lone wolf economy in the OG Money Podcast with Lonnie Gordon Agolnik. Drawing on over 20 years of experience in the trenches of Wall Street, Lonnie explores what it takes to be successful in today's rapidly changing environment. From daily routines, wealth strategies, and sustaining the highest levels of wisdom, Lonnie and his guests unpack proven ways to live an extraordinary life. Welcome to the OG Money Podcast. I got James Swanick from Australia. Welcome to the program, James. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, so I'm going to give a little bit of background, right? I'm going to go into yeah. the history of James and I. Um, it's a one-way history, but I'm scrolling through my Instagram this is the power of social media today, right? So I'm just, I'm scrolling. It's a little bit of a tough time, right? Uh, I'm going through a little bit of a period in my life. Markets aren't cooperating. Things are happening in, 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 in a rough direction in my life. And I read uh, the no alcohol challenge. It's a 90 day no alcohol challenge. And I do, I do like a double take, right? I go, hmm, that's interesting. 90 days. I haven't gone 90 days without a drink of alcohol since maybe like 11th grade of high school. And I was like, what, 40 years old at the time. So I decide to do it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this. My friends are like, all right, what are you out of your mind? Uh, you're not drinking tonight. This is a Saturday and it's a 90 day challenge. So everybody respects it. I got to tell you, the 90 days turned into 120 days, turned into six months, turned into a year. After the year, I, you know, I'm not going to say I, I fell back. I have a drink and I do have a drink every now and then, but by no means do I feel like if at any point in my life, I just want to stop drinking completely. I can do that. But I want to thank you for changing the direction of my life because not only did I lose weight, I felt better. I slept better. Um, I really, you know, just changed my life around and I kind of want to dig into that a little bit. But before we get there, I'm, I want to go back into your life and your history, and I want to hear about your story because you're in Hollywood, you're ESPN Sports Center guy, you're a Hollywood reporter. I mean, you're in the you're knee deep in in the party scene of LA, right? Tell me a little bit first how you get there. Like, what's it like as a kid growing up in Australia? How do you end up in the United States? Let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah, so I grew up in Australia, as you said, and I was a societally acceptable drinker in that I drank one or two drinks at the end of the day to relax. Uh, on Friday night or Saturday or Sunday, I would drink some more. I was rarely getting drunk, but, you know, I was drinking, you know, three, four, five drinks on a weekend, and let's call it, you know, one or two drinks a night, each night, and doing that very consistently. Um, starting from probably the age of 17 or 18. And then I got to age 35 and I was in Austin, Texas. Um, it was in uh, 2010. And I'd had a couple of drinks uh, at an industry party at the South by Southwest Festival. And I, it was two Bombay Sapphire gin and tonics. And uh, didn't get drunk, of course, just a couple of drinks, but went home to my hotel. And I woke up in the morning and I looked in the mirror and I was like, man, James, you look tired. You look weathered, like you put on some weight. I was just blah. So I wasn't rock bottom. I was just kind of like a six out of 10 in my looks, in my health, in my sleep, in my productivity, in my focus, in my business. And I just went, you know what? I'm going to take a break here just to get a glimpse of what it might, might feel like. And so I just committed to going 30 days without alcohol. And in 30 days, I lost 13 pounds. I slept better. I auditioned for and got a job uh, as a sports center anchor on ESPN. And I credit the clarity and focus that I got from being alcohol free to contributing to me getting that job. Um, I started to uh, attract a higher caliber of, of, of acquaintance or relationship into my life. And when I got to day 30, I thought, you know what, I'll just keep going and see if I can get to day 40. And then I got to day 40, it's like, see if I can get to day 50. And then I just kept going. And then a year later, I was back at the same South by Southwest Festival in Austin, but this time in 2011, and I went to the um, Luster Pearl Bar and ordered a Budweiser to have a celebratory beer, and I put it to my lips, and I just stopped, and I, I put it down, and I went, you know what, 
all of the pros of not drinking have far outweighed any pleasure that I, I recall getting from drinking. So I'm just going to keep on going. And I haven't drunk since. I haven't drunk since 2010. And in that time, you know, I've attracted an amazing romantic relationship. I, I, I own two, um, you know, fairly successful businesses. I sleep um, almost flawlessly. Uh, I, I'm not walking around with a six pack abs or anything like that, but I think I got the body that nature intended me to have. And I, I just sum it up this way. You know, I've had a life with alcohol and I've had a life without alcohol and without just feels a lot better. I want to, uh, I want to, uh, dive into a little bit of like what brought you to Southwest by Southwest in Austin. Like, how did you get there? Yeah, well, I was living in Hollywood, California at the time, and I was a film and entertainment journalist. So I uh, would interview movie stars at film junkets um, for magazines and newspapers uh, in the UK and in Australia. And so I got to go to things like the Playboy Mansion and interview Hugh Hefner, and I got to go to the, the Golden Globes and the and the Oscars and, you know, interview folks like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and all that kind of stuff. And the South by Southwest Festival uh, obviously had um, a film festival there. It also had a music festival. And so I was there uh, at that festival in my capacity as a, as a print journalist interviewing people. Um, and, of course, when you get there, there's lots of industry parties with open bars and, uh, you know, free booze. Um, and living in Hollywood for, as, as a film journalist, there was always open bars everywhere I went. And so I would always partake and it was a, it, it was a heck of a lot of fun, but it also, you know, it, it has consequences and the consequences for me was, you know, extra weight, irritability, lack of focus, uh, until of course my kind of breakthrough moment, I guess there, there in Austin. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but like, you know, no matter what, uh, I never feel good after drinking. Right. Like even a glass of wine, people talk about a glass of wine and night is good or a beer or a drink after work is OK. What's your thought on like a glass of wine? Why do we get promoted that a glass of wine tonight is good for you? Is that is that a bunch of BS or what? Yeah, that's um, that comes from a study in the early 90s and it's been debunked now dozens of times. Um, it's actually r ridiculous to suggest that um, a glass of attractively packaged poison is good for you because all al alcohol is, is attractively packaged poison. Um, in fact, you, you mentioned a glass of wine there. Um, you may be surprised to learn that a glass of red wine and a glass of beer are actually the worst um, uh, alcohol drinks that you can have by way of toxins and the effect on the body. A lot of people mistakenly think that it must be these hard liquors, um, you know, tequila and vodka, but they're actually the, the least bad. Um, because they're, they're very clean in terms of the, in terms of toxins. So, um, yeah, when you drink, um, wine or beer, you're literally pouring toxins down your throat and it can take up to, uh, seven days for the toxins to leave your body. In fact, they've done it. They've done, um, studies before where they take a, a strand of hair from someone and, uh, they can look at it under a microscope and they can still they can see the toxins from alcohol in the strand of hair seven days after someone drank it uh, so after someone drank a glass of alcohol a glass of alcohol it's fascinating stuff so um, while it's true that you you get a temporary illusionary feeling of calm in the moment at the end of a day if you're stressed and you have a drink it is temporary and it is illusionary. What, what happens is the toxins then leave your body, which leaves your, uh, your body craving more of the toxins. Uh, and those toxins um, compromise your sleep quality. And when your sleep quality is compromised, you um, wake up irritable. And when you're irritable, you lose focus. And when you lose focus, you seek refuge in sugary foods like a Kit Kat or Gatorade or a croissant or a whatever. And frankly, more alcohol. And then this vicious cycle continues. Yeah. You know, what's uh, interesting also is like when I stopped drinking and, and now that I'm um, more of a social drinker, but even that I would say is like once a week with a drink, maybe on Saturday nights with the, with, uh, with the wife or, or some friends. But um, 
I did go through my phase where I was having a scotch, you know, by myself. And that scotch went to one, two, three by scotch four. You know, you're, it's just, you know, it numbs you. And then, you know, the fighting with the wife and not being a good role model to the kids. I mean, it's just a spiraling effect. You know what I mean? Um, so when you get out of that world and you take a step back and you do get clean and sober and you do have the water or the Sprite or, or lemonades, you actually look at people and you watch them where you were and you're just like, oh my God, I I cannot believe how this guy's acting or this girl's acting. And I can only imagine what I was like, right? When I stopped drinking, I dropped about 15 pounds myself. Um, I started doing a boot camp every day at 6 a.m. in the morning. And my business took off and I wrote a book and I went on my own and I became an independent financial advisor and started Gordon Wealth. And in a way, it all started from the Instagram post I read that said, take a 90 day challenge. It changed my life. Like, so, you know, you, you can't even imagine, you know, what, what the alcohol is doing to your body while you're drinking, even socially. And then I would say secondarily, the power of social media today, we don't even know each other. You're in Australia. And I just so happened to scroll through my thread. I don't know if it was you uh, whether I was friends with you or it was a promoted ad or whatever, but now you're on your life's mission and your life's mission is to actually do what you did for me to millions of people, right? That's solely what you're dedicated to, right? Tell us like, where would, where would people go to find the book or, or read a little bit about your story and, and get more information about how you're doing a revolution of like no drinking? Yeah, thank you. Well, just before I do that, congratulations on your achievements as a result of being alcohol free. That's amazing. It's it's amazing how we think that we, you know, how often we think that we don't make an impact. And it's easy for us to put stuff out on social media and whatever and, and hear nothing in return. But then you hear a story like that where you you can see how you trying to help people or you just being an example of, of living a, a healthy life can trigger a, a lifetime of healthy habits in people that you don't even know, or in this case, people that you do know. So Well, I tracked you down. I had to have you as one of my first top 10 guests on my podcast for the sole fact that you changed my life. You're probably like, who's this maniac that keeps texting me, calling me, emailing me? <laughs> To get me on his podcast, right? Like you have no idea who I am, but yet you changed my life. So I needed to get that story out. You, that's how important it was to me because I think that there are people out there right now that think they have to drink alcohol. They think they have to fit in, but it, they don't yeah. need alcohol. I learned you don't need alcohol to be the funniest, to be the best dancer, to be the most charismatic, to be the most fun guy in the room. You don't need alcohol for that, right? You're actually even more fun and funnier when you're not drinking the alcohol because you're sharper. Yeah, that's exactly right. People think that when they quit, if, if they quit alcohol, they're going to be ostracized from their social group or that they're going to be dull or boring, that they have to lock themselves away at home and not go out and face society. And the opposite is more likely to be true. Um, when you are clear... You, like you said, are sharper. You have deeper conversations. You have more energy because you sleep better. You wake up feeling better. Your whole mood changes. Like everything just gets better as opposed to this matrix that we're in now where societally, society has tricked us into believing that drinking this attractively packaged poison somehow elevates your mood and elevates your life. Again, temporary and illusionary. In the long run, if you live an alcohol-free life, you're going to be smarter, you're going to sleep better, you're going to be more productive, you're going to be funnier, you're going to dance better, <laughs> you're going to remember and uh, you know fun times more than if you're drinking, and everything just shifts. Um, you know, I have a lot. I have a program. It's called Project Ninety, and it and it's mostly for people who are over the age of thirty-five. They're an entrepreneur. They're a top professional. You know, someone who would naturally consider themselves to be a high achiever. Um, and the and Project Ninety is really for someone who's a high achiever but knows that drinking is getting in getting in the way of them 
achieving at their best. Because let's just say that you, you're not an alcoholic. And just to be clear, I don't really focus on helping people who would describe themselves an alcohol, as an alcoholic. I help people who have a really bad embedded habit of drinking two or three drinks a night and a lot more on the weekends, right? Someone who is needing that drink at the end of the day to calm down, who's needing that drink in order to socialize, who's needing a drink just to fit in. Like it's more of a, it's more of a mental addiction than it is like a chemical addiction. And uh, what we find is people who go through that Project 90 program, in the first couple of weeks, they realize, you know what, no one really cares that they're not drinking. Everyone thinks that everyone else is caring and thinking about it and going, oh, he must be an alcoholic. And what they soon realize is that no one really cares. Everyone's worried about themselves. They also realize that they sleep better and just sleeping better as a result of quitting drinking can just elevate your performance. You don't need all this biohacking stuff and take the best supplements and work out and do all these kind of things. I mean, you, those things are amazing and they, they're fantastic. But if you're doing all of those things and you're drinking this attractively packaged poison, you're just, you, you, you're, you're living a contradictory life. Like you're undoing all of that, that great work. So you asked, you know, where people can find it. I mean, just jameswanick.com. Um, there's all the details there. Uh, if you're in the US and you, you want to some more details about um, you, you want a free guide, I can help you to quit drinking just to outline my methodology for it. If you're in the US and you're on your, on your cell phone, you can um, just text me at 44222 and put in the word quit guide, one word, quit guide. Um, just text me at 44222 and I'll send you, a, I'll send you off a, you know, a quit alcohol guide. Um, but yeah, so amazing to hear your results, Lonnie. Incredible. Right. So then that rolled into, you know, me having, uh, you know, following you. And then that rolled into you. You obviously are, are an entrepreneur, right? So you have some businesses. So I bought the sleep swannies, the glasses, right? So every night I'd go to bed and, and um, you know, I couldn't fall asleep after reading, you know, or, or whatever I was doing, you know, on the um, cell phone. So once I got your glasses, which kills that blue rays, uh, the swannies, Right. Yeah. So yeah. I got a couple of those, one for me, one for my wife. They, they are amazing. I love them. How, how's that business going? Because I saw they were flying off the shelves when, you know, when I bought them, how's that going? Yeah. Now? Yeah. It's great. You know, it's, um, one of the things that, um, alcohol free living has given me has been, um, momentum and clarity and focus and strategy to build businesses. So one of my businesses is helping, you know, high achievers to, um, get power over alcohol and quit alcohol. And that's a coaching business now. It's helped about 20,000 people. Uh, and then the other business is uh, Swanee's Blue Light Blocking Glasses. Um, so I produce a pair of blue light blocking glasses that you wear to block the blue light um, that comes out of your screens, um, which can cause fogginess and eye fatigue and disrupt your sleep. Uh, we started that in 2015. Um, got off to a flyer. We did a million dollars in, in sales in the first 12 months. And then it's, it's grown from there. And, and funnily enough, when COVID hit uh, in probably like, when, what was it? February, March, yep. 2020, we were about two weeks there where our sales plummeted. Like they literally went boom and crashed. It was almost like everyone was like, what do we do? I don't know what to do. And everyone stopped doing what, you know, stopped buying and stopped whatever. And then suddenly you know, two, three weeks after that, sales just miraculously came back again. And then there's been this steady increase ever since. Um, I think because more and more people are now working from home and they're now spending even more time on their screens. So now there's never been more of a need to block the artificial blue light from screens with a pair of, of blue light blocking glasses. Yeah. So let me touch on that sleep thing because uh, I'm a big guy of, uh, I'm a big proponent of like sleep. So I, I think I need seven hours, maybe seven and a half is ideal, but seven is what I need to function at, at my peak performance. Um, anything below that though, um, I, I'd really be interested in seeing a sleep you know, specialist or a doctor because something happens at like six and a half or even 645. If I don't get that seven, that it's like a light switch, right? In my brain, it, it doesn't come on and it's almost worse than being drunk, right? It's like um, mm -hmm. my irritable, I'm, I'm, I'm just like tired. I, I shouldn't be driving because I'm, I'm not focused. Everything, my decision-making. So I take such, 
important. It's so important for me to make sure that I'm sleeping by nine thirty, ten ish. You know that um, I I don't care what else is going on in my life. If it's during the week, Monday through Friday, I'm sleeping by ten o'clock, right? Because I'm working out at six. So my perfect day is is to get that seven hours, then hit the gym, and then hit the cold plunge, and then hit my day. Um, what research have you done? I'm sure because of these glasses, right? What is that? What's that switch in my brain? That's just 15 minute difference. Like, why does that happen? Yeah. yeah so it, how much time you spend in that deep REM restorative phase of sleep is so important. Um, I wear an aura ring. Um, you can see here's a company called aura aura ring and, um, it tracks my sleep. Um, so I'll go to sleep in the night. Uh, I'll wake up the next day and it'll tell me how much time I spent in you know, REM sleep, how much time I spent in restorative sleep, how much I moved during the night, all that kind of stuff. Um, and what we know to be true is that the less time that you spend in that REM phase of sleep and uh, that deep um, stage of sleep, the less time you spend in that, the more compromised you're going to feel throughout the day. Um, foggy, irritable, um, fatigue, all those things start to happen. So the sweet spot for most human beings is at least seven hours, but probably around eight hours. So let's call it seven to eight hours is the sweet spot um, where if you're sleeping seven, eight hours and the quality of your sleep hasn't been compromised by drinking alcohol before you go to sleep or eating food in the last three hours before you go to sleep or staring into screens, watching Netflix without wearing a pair of blue light blocking glasses, if you can get seven or eight hours sleep, you're generally going to be you're generally going to feel pretty good. Okay, um, the science tells us, the data tells us that anything below that, so you're starting to get into six hours, thirty, six hours, forty-five, like you've experienced, Lonnie, you start to feel different. You you have your body hasn't had that amount of time to repair. The glucose in your brain hasn't been restored to full levels. You're feeling a little bit foggy, a little bit irritable. Now, it's not the case for every human being. For example, President John, Donald Trump only sleeps four hours a night. Um, the president before tr Trump, Obama, slept six hours a night. Um, but then you look at people like uh, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world on Amazon. He tends to sleep, um, I think, eight hours a night. Um, uh, Elon Musk, I think, is much less. I think he's only like four or five hours a night. He, Elon Musk, the billionaire. Now, again, I can't speak for their health overall. They seem to get a lot done, but um, there are cases in the world where people who seemingly are healthy and have very productive lives are only getting four, four or five hours a night. Generally speaking, that's not a good idea. Generally speaking, if you want a well-rounded, physically well, uh, healthy life with clarity and focus and energy, you want to get to at least seven hours, maybe six hours, 45 plus, but He's starting to get into the danger zone there. Okay, so you have the blue eye business. What what other ventures right now are you are you digging into as far as businesses go? And what 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 did you what are you scratching right now? Because you're you seem like a guy who scratches his edge. You, you don't want to drink alcohol. You're sending it out to the world. You wanna you obviously had an issue with the blue screen. You then sent it out to the world. So what's the latest uh, itch you're scratching? And what are you working on? Yeah, so my I have two main businesses, which are the ones we've been talking about. It's the coaching business around alcohol. So I have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and top professionals who are going through that Project 90 program, and that business has been increasing, um, particularly since COVID hit. There's a lot more people are drinking. So I've been focusing most of my attention on that business, which has been going terrific. Um, the Swanick business um, uh, we've had since 2015. My brother is the CEO uh, and he runs the business. So that continues to grow. And I am I take on more of like an advisory role now. And then a few years ago, I just changed my the way I introduced myself. Rather than saying I'm a coach, I now say I'm an investor. And just saying that has um, changed uh, where I allocate my, my capital. So I've invested in, um, uh, I bought... Uh, I was part of a consortium to buy Pier One Imports uh, recently, about three months ago. I bought uh, Dress Barn, which was a, a company that had been going since the 1960s. Uh, a lot of these big before, retail before, brands. Before you go on, that's Ty Lopez. Are you tied up with Ty yeah. Lopez? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. So Ty Lopez has an investor club and I'm part of that club and um, essentially uh, distressed retail brands, which are all going broke uh, currently or have gone broke because of COVID. Like COVID's just, you know, decimated retail shopping. We've gone in and bought these these companies at rock bottom prices, we think, uh, and just turned them into an e-commerce play. So, uh, for example, Pier One Imports was, you know, a billion dollar company um, only a few years ago doing a billion dollars plus, plus revenue. We, we bought it for $31 million. Um, we got rid of all of, the reta- all of the retail sides of things, just turned it into an e-commerce play. Dress Barn, like I said, been around since the 1960s. Hundreds of physical retail stores closed down all the retail stores. We just have it now as an e-commerce only only business. Linens and Things is another business. Models, which is a very famous sporting goods company, mostly in the Northeast. So, um, you know, two th- three things I have really at the moment. One of them is my coaching business to help people quit drinking. Second thing is the Swanick sleep business, the blue light blocking glasses. And then the third thing is um, allocating capital uh, as an investor. Uh, in a lot of these um, distressed retail brands. Well, I appreciate the time you took out. You sound like a busy guy. So uh, you're my kind of guy, though. You're not happy unless you're doing something, uh, you know, worthwhile. But uh, it seems like you've been with a lot of people, a lot of smart people. Um, What would you tell me the best advice you've ever been given? Well, I'll give you two pieces of advice. Um, One of them is is actually two pieces of advice crammed together and then I'll give you the other one. So the first one is just do it, do it now. So just do it, obviously the Nike slogan and do it now. So I've just merged those two together and just do it really just means like whatever you want to do in life, just go ahead, just do it. Like there's going to be a hundred reasons why not to do it. And maybe you only need one to do it, just do it. And then the next thing is do it now because procrastination is a bitch. Like uh, I procrastinate um, often, not as much as um, uh, many people, I don't think. And whenever I finally get started, I'm just like, oh man, I should have started this a year ago. I should have started this, done this an hour ago. I should have done this two months ago. Like procrastination will just kill your dreams. And so if you can get over that hump and get momentum going and things just become beautiful. The hardest part I find is just starting. That's the hardest thing, just the, the first thing. But then once you get going, the momentum kicks in and you're off to the races. So I would say just do it and do it now. And then the second one, um, which is what I learned from Ty Lopez, um, which is just consider yourself a mad scientist and run a whole bunch of experiments all the time. And what that means is you got a business idea, run an experiment and test if anyone will buy buy your product. Just run the experiment. Um, You're interested in singing, run an experiment and book a singing lesson. You're interested in, um, you know, getting six pack abs, run a, be a mad scientist and play around and run experiments to see how you can get a six pack abs. Don't just be so like um, attached to the outcome and like you have to have this thing, just run experiments and test things. So that really has given me permission to kind of venture out and test and, and try new things um, without fearing like I'm going to fail and it's okay if some of them don't work out. It's just, I, but I don't let that fear of failing um, prevent me from starting. So yeah, just to sum that up, I just say, you know, consider yourself a mad scientist and experiment often. Uh, great advice. I love it. I'm going to take all those to heart. Uh, I do want to switch the script here for a quick second before we wrap up. What question do you have for me? Uh, well, I'd love to ask you, uh, what feedback you have received from loved ones or acquaintances or friends in your life since you gave up the alcohol um, and that you've chosen to be, you know, live an alcohol-free lifestyle, essentially. What has the feedback you've got from others been? Okay, so um, I'll take it back a step because the first year I was completely alcohol-free. Um, today I'll put an asterisk on that and I'm a social drinker and I'll have a cocktail every now and then, but I'm down to like one drink, two at the most when I decide to have one. But, um, great. Yeah. So the, I I never want to wake up hangover. My whole philosophy in life now is if I feel like crap the next day, I don't do it. Right. So if I have more than a drink, I feel like crap. And even one drink like that wine, I feel like crap. I can't sleep. Why would I do it if I can't sleep good and I can't feel good the next day? It makes no sense. So that's just that's the way I've simplified it. 
But the feedback at first was like, it was funny. Like they didn't believe it or they tested me or they wanted me to drink. Um, my wife, without a doubt, was the happiest. Um, I became a good role model for my children because they're now 13 and 11 and they're influential, right? If they see their parents are drinking all the time and getting drunk, they think that's acceptable and normal, right? I don't want to be that role model. I don't want to be a role model for my kids that, you know, getting drunk and plastered and throwing up all over the place is acceptable. So that was the number two. And number three, I realized that people do not care. They, they don't, you're not that interesting. They could give two, you know what I'm saying? They, they can give two craps about whether or not you're having a drink or not. You can just have a Sprite. You can throw in the lime. They don't know. They, and they don't care. So that's what I came about. And, um, you know, instead of, uh, you know, at this point in my life, worrying about drinking and alcohol and all that stuff, I'm more interested in making sure I get my workout in, make sure I'm laser sharp for my clients and being there for my kids on the weekends for soccer games and hanging out and parties with my, my friends without the alcohol. So, yeah, you had a remarkable influence in my life. I'm really, really appreciative that you took the time out. And you're doing it for a lot of people. Trust me. You don't understand what that Instagram. And you're blowing up your Instagram. What's your Instagram handle uh, so everyone can know? At James Swanick. Yeah, at, at James Swanick. Yeah, you're, you've got a ton of followers, huh? you got a real tribe out there now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's growing. And, you know, people are becoming curious about living the alcohol-free lifestyle. And it doesn't mean just giving up completely. It can mean like your scenario where you have complete and utter control over it and have the occasional drink here and there. It doesn't need to mean you quit. I've chosen to quit, but you know, you know, it, this is not, the, the, this doesn't mean you got to give it up forever, but at the very least get complete power over it. Right. Because otherwise it's just, it's a very, very slippery slope. Right. And, and I think I, I think like if I never had a drink again in my life, I, I'd be just as happy as if I had that occasional drink. Like, you know what I mean? That's, um, so I think, uh, you are doing amazing things out there. You gotta, you know, keep doing that. Keep plugging away on that Instagram. Um, you never know when that person like me does that double take and that 90 days does change their life. And, uh, I, I'm appreciative. I'm forever appreciative of it. If you come to Miami, make sure you dial me up, send me an email, send me a text, make sure that uh, we get together and we have a water. Not a drink. <laughs> Thanks, Lonnie. All right, bud. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the OG Money Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available.